Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the OnlyFins channel. Welcome back to another Wednesday vlog episode. Today I'm expecting a package from Aqua SD. It's Aqua San Diego. Never ordered anything from them. Uh, this is not an ad for their service or their products. Uh, but I found some really cool inverts on their website for my Ultimate Nature Systems 45U. Um, so once you, what you see is what you get items that I felt like I couldn't pass up. They were at a really good price. Um, so we'll get to the box, we'll get to unboxing, we'll get to adding and acclimating to my tank, uh, and I got a couple other things that I'm adding into the tank today as well. Uh, so really exciting video today, got some really cool stuff. Uh, anyway, follow along, let's get after it. Alright, let's see what we got. Nicely packaged box. I got one, two, three, four, five maxi mini carpet anemones, all different colors, all different uh, sizes, most likely. Um, they're even nice enough to throw in a free free coral. Not sure what this is yet, but it looks like a little chalice, something like that. Anyway, take a look at that here in a second. Very cool though. Thank you, Aquas. Didn't expect the freebie. Now that I've got everything cleaned up, take a closer look at these. Five maxi mini carpet anemones. This came in pretty good shape. Nothing really falling off of them or anything like that. This one I can see a hole all the way through the mouth. So hope that's okay. got everything out of the box let's get it acclimated to my tank. I'm gonna hold off on the freebie coral uh, I'm not sure what to do with that yet. Okay so we're gonna get my new anemones acclimated. Uh, the purpose of acclimating them would be that the water that they came in probably got a little bit fouled while it was being shipped uh, you know 24 hours just in the same small amount of water. Probably just gonna want to change that out anyway uh, but also the conditions that the anemones come from are just going to be different than the di uh, conditions of my tank that they're going into. So you just want to slowly acclimate them. So we're just going to want to be changing small amounts of water from the container that I'm holding the anemones in with water from my tank. Uh, maybe over the course of about 15 or 20 minutes or so. Nothing major. I know that the water in the tank's um, good for the anemones. so. Just want to make sure that they're not experiencing any kind of shock by being uh, just thrown into the tank. It's another reason that I really like this aquarium cart. Um, I can pull it up right next to any tank that I'm working on. I've got a flat surface. Okay, so now that we've got the anemones all acclimated, uh, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do before we put them in the tank is to turn off the water flow. They have a foot that they have to use to attach to rock surfaces. It takes them some time to you know, get that foot attached. 
Usually they'll pull it down into the sand and stick it onto the glass bottom or uh, you know any of the rock surfaces in the tank they'll attach to. Uh, like I said, if that flow is on, they'll be blowing around. They won't be able to have time to attach or attach where you want them to. Um, and at least with this type of anemone, they do move around a little bit, but generally if you put them somewhere um, and they're able to get attached, they'll, they'll generally stay in that spot as long as they find it suitable. For introducing the anemones into the tank, I like to wear latex gloves. Uh, you definitely don't have to, but it can irritate the skin. It's probably best to be careful. Um, not to mention, the anemones can be sensitive to bacterial infections, things like that. So it's best just to be sterile. All right, so we got our flow off and our rubber glove on. We can start introducing the anemones to the tank. look closely you can see the anemones sort of moving pulsating trying to get their foot settled this is a prime example of why you should set them in with the flow turned off these guys have no idea what they're doing or where they're going they're just trying to set their foot down and get secured to a rock Although it's unknown exactly how long anemones can live, it's thought that there are specimens in the wild that have been around for hundreds of years. All right, got my flow turned back on. We hoping nothing blows away. All these in here look like they're pretty set, but this one is kind of just hanging on by Maybe a little bit of its foot there, but I think so far so good. Uh, we'll let that go for about another 20 or 30 minutes. All right, so while we're waiting for those anemones to get settled into the tank, I thought maybe we could go over a few of my newer setups, kind of do our normal Wednesday vlog episode update on all my tanks. Uh, this is a tank that I just set up uh, my last Sunday video, Ultimate Nature Systems 3N. Um, I actually decided to put a little filter on this tank. Uh, I felt like it maybe would be necessary just to kind of get things going. Might end up taking that off. Um, ultimately, I'm only gonna be keeping some pretty simple shrimp in here, I think. So probably won't need a major filter, especially once those plants get going. Uh, but yeah, so far, so good. Plants are looking happy. Everything's looking really sharp in the tank. Couldn't be happier about this one. Quick little update on the UNS 16T. Very happy with this tank so far. Uh, one of my subscribers here called this tank the Thanos tank. And I think I can see it, uh, his head there, his hand there. Um, so I've, I've started calling this tank the Thanos tank. Uh, I think it's really cool. So yeah, everything's going really well in here. A couple of the plants in the back, those cryptochorian wentiis or wentis, whatever you want to call them, um, are not necessarily growing yet. They are slow growers, so I'm not concerned. As long as they don't look like they're dying, then I should be good. The base tank, also doing really well. Uh, got the Valisneria Italia down the bottom, Italian Valisneria. A um, little bit of Java moss up at the top. Pretty straightforward. Just kind of waiting to see that one grow out. Anyway, I think it looks really cool on the desktop. Kind of nice to add some height, a little bit of variation in all the tank sizes. The Lagoon tank. Let me close this window so we can get a better, better look at it. The lagoon tank is chugging right along. Again, not a whole lot of updates with this tank ever. Uh, you know, just clean the glass, skimmer, change out those filter pads. I did add this leather coil pretty recently. It's doing really well, it's starting to take hold. Had another finger leather that kind of broke off and just fell down. I'm just letting it grow right there. Um, we'll see what that turns into. Had a little bit of an issue with the heating in this tank. I, maybe it just slipped by me or 
Somehow I had adjusted the heat on the tank upwards of about 82 degrees. So I've turned that down recently. Some of the mushrooms weren't too happy about it. Um, that heater is also pretty old. It's probably about time that I replace it. I do get a lot of questions about these lights. These are Kingbo Par 38 bulbs. Um, I get these on Amazon. I've probably replaced them twice in two years, um, maybe two or three years actually. They last a really long time, never had any issues with them. I just figured that, you know, probably replacing them every now and then would be a good idea to get the, the maximum uh, you know, brightness and intensity out of them. The fixture is just a tree lamp that I got from Home Depot. Um, and I actually kind of just zip tie these up a little bit to give them the height off the tank that I need. I can kind of adjust them. See, I didn't snip that off, but I can kind of adjust the height on the lights. These actually, these arms move around. Um, so it's it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty mobile, pretty accessible, I guess you could say, for what I'm trying to do with this tank. You know, these trees are growing, they're going in different directions. I try to control it with the bonsai wire. But ultimately it has to be lit. So I have to be able to move those lights around too. And I think this has been working really, really well. Um, you know, I think maybe in the future, depending on how big these trees get, I'll have to have some sort of ceiling lighting or something coming down. You know, I think it'd be really cool if these got, you know, as, as big as trees do, I'm not opposed to keeping them for that long. I've already had them for about eight years. So what's another eight more? Hopefully there's not too bad of a glare on the tank, but, uh, my UNS 90P is doing very well also. Got these keyhole cichlids from last Wednesday, the Wednesday vlog episode. They are doing great. They've actually bred or spawned a few times. Um, down back here, there's a little hole. I put some river stones underneath this uh, piece of wood to kind of prop it up. And I think that's giving them the perfect, you know, perfect flat surface to lay eggs on. So two of them, there's three, I'm not sure, but two of them have spawned down there. Um, I don't think with the amount of fish that are in here, I'll ever see any fry, but cool nonetheless. They're very happy. Um, I'm really happy with how this tank's starting to come along. Still waiting for that red tiger lotus to grow up and over that piece of wood. That's really going to just make my day, make the whole tank. Um, it's kind of been one of the visions that I've had for it this entire time. So yeah, just, just waiting for that to come. Everything up top is doing really, really well. Um, say really really quite a bit but it is doing really well I uh, put this misting system on here uh, I think I showed that in last week's Wednesday vlog episode as well I fill this container about every three or four days um, so it, it lasts quite a long time keeps everything up here you know pretty pretty moist um, some of the moss is drying out but I take that to acclimation as well Try to give this guy a go right here. I think I'm gonna have to end up pulling him out. Not getting enough light, not getting enough moisture over there. Um, anyway, maybe I can find some way to grow something on top of that. Got some suggestions for orchids, things like that, especially on the Thanos tank. Somebody mentioned growing an orchid off the top. That's something that I have to look into. I'm not familiar with that, but I have seen them grown that way. Um, I'll just have to see what the, what the best way to do that is. Um, but yeah, misting's really cool. Turn it off, just kidding. Tend to just turn it on. Anyway, yeah, super cool. These go off, uh, I think, once every hour for about four seconds. Pretty cool, adds a nice feature to the tank, functional as well. My innovative Marine SR80 reef tank is chugging right along as well. Anthea's still doing great. Got them on that auto feeder, being fed a couple times a day. They are super happy. All my corals seem to be doing really well. Also, this bird's nest that I've been so concerned about, um, you know, with the uh, Trisophytes algae all over it, as you can see, is looking pretty clean. There's still a couple of little spots, but I mean, it's recovered almost 100%. Um, all these corals growing really well. Still not sure why this one discolored a few weeks ago. It looks a little rough right now, but keeping an eye on it, just doing water changes, normal stuff, keeping up with it. Um, I am letting the uh, 
coralline algae grow on the back of the tank quite a bit. Don't know if I want to end up scraping that off. Sometimes I think it, sometimes I think it looks cool and sometimes I really like just the clean background um, to give some contrast for the corals. But I don't know, call me lazy, call me trying new things. Um, I'm not sure, I just, I haven't scraped it. Let me, let me know what you guys think I should do. Clean background or let the coral line take over. For the final surprise of the video, I went ahead and got some anemone shrimp for the anemones. You may have heard these shrimp referred to as sexy shrimp, anemone shrimp, or dancer shrimp. It's probably a handful of other names that I can't think of. Um, but these are really cool little uh, additions to a, a reef tank. They will use the anemone as host uh, for a mutualistic or symbiotic relationship where the shrimp gets protection from the anemone and the anemone shares food from the shrimp. 